Well, less than three years after leading the coalition to a thumping electoral defeat at the hands of Premier Daniel Andrews, Matthew Guy has returned as the Victorian Liberal leader. Few could argue he faces a monumental challenge to unite a wounded and divided party, to inspire a state battered by the virus and hundreds of days of lockdowns, and to dethrone a Premier who, despite presiding over a conga line of scandals, failures and fiscal blowouts, maintains a ruthless grip on power in Victoria and if, who polls are to be believed might suffer a hit at the next election but would likely still get another four years in power. So how's he going to do it all? Let's ask the man himself in his first TV interview since returning to the leadership. Matthew Guy joins me now from Melbourne. Well, opposition leader, you got the title back. Welcome. You're here again. I don't need to tell you it's the Thanks, hardest Peter. job in politics. It's a hard job. I worked for an opposition leader once. You've been there before. So why take it on again? Why the need for change? Peter, Victoria is in need of a dose of hope. And all we get from the current government is fear-mongering and being told that lockdowns are effectively forever. Victorians, or nearly 7 million of us, need a government, need an opposition at this point in time to tell them that this is not forever, that we don't have to live like this. And when you look at the government's record here in Victoria, I mean, let's be honest, they've still got a record of more Australians dying of COVID in this state. In fact, 80% of COVID deaths have occurred in Victoria. Melbourne is now the city with the world's longest lockdowns in the world, as I said. And so that is not a great record. What we want to do is give Victorians hope to all those small business people who are watching this show tonight, whose businesses are locked up from a government who doesn't care less if you don't have a public service income, to all those parents who have had to homeschool their kids for nearly 200 days here in Victoria. Think of all the things kids have missed out on in this state in the last two years. Formals, uh, dances, whether it is uh, school functions, sporting events, uni kids who have missed out on the first two years of university, what they've missed in this state. It doesn't have to be like this. So what we want to do as the opposition in Victoria is give people hope. When we meet those national cabinet guidelines, 70 per cent, no more statewide lockdowns. Treating schools as a bubble so the kids can go back to schools. Actually giving small business the chance to reopen and the certainty to reopen. And importantly, as I said, following national cabinet guidelines, not treating them as an indicative uh, uh, political tool as the government does down here in Victoria. We don't have to live like this, but we are because the government of the day treats us like mugs and uses COVID as a political weapon, not as, as it should mm. be, how to combat a health pandemic and then get out of it for the rest of the state. The former Liberal leader, Michael O'Brien, was very gracious today. He called on the party to unite. He wasn't point scoring as he left the job. He said it's a job of all Liberals to save Victoria, save Victoria. I mean, they are strong cut through words. Help people who don't understand, who don't live in Victoria, the sort of task ahead, because save Victoria, I know sounds dramatic, but beyond this pandemic, the, the, the pandemic is just the last two years in Victoria. What's been going on in this state though, it, it's many years in the making under Labor. Peter, the budget down here was stuffed before COVID. And then they borrowed $150 billion. Just to just factor that in. When Jeff Kennett won in the 90s and repaid $30 billion of debt, that was enormous. You know, the likely time of a change of government next year, there'll be, I suspect, close to $200 billion worth of state government debt in the state of Victoria. Now, add New South Wales, Queensland and a few others and you might get to Victoria. We've got structural deficits in this state approaching $10 billion dollars. And the state government says it's about a health pandemic. No, the budget was stuffed before it. Every infrastructure project they've touched down here has massively blown out. Every dollar they waste on those infrastructure blowouts could have gone to building a COVID hospital, could have gone to building quarantine facilities, could have gone to saving small business. And that's the price we're paying for an incompetent government. So it's not about a government that's managed itself well in Victoria. In fact, quite the opposite. It has stuffed up COVID management and it had a budget which was in an awful position beforehand. Our task as Liberals, my task as the Liberal leader, the Coalition leader, is to ensure that, noting the mess we could inherit, we can still have a brighter future than what we've inherited. 
And that is true, because we need to have strong policy around business rejuvenation, but more the point, actually telling Victorians that our state has a future, strong future, and giving it hope. Every day we get the state of emergency being extended, the Premier telling us to be terrified, stay indoors, dividing Victorians, pitting one Victorian against the other. It is all an attitude problem with the government here in Victoria. It's all about one person, as I've said before. It's all about the one man, the Premier. A government I lead will be about Victorians, not about the Premier. All right, well, for only one term over the last two decades, your mob's been in power. It's been a Labor stranglehold for almost 20 years. How do you go about convincing Victorians it's time for change? Never thought that it would be an easy task. Never, ever thought it would be an easy task. But, you know, nothing in politics that's worthwhile is easy. And in Victoria, we do have a job to do. And the reason I have uh, taken this job today and um, uh, had what's happened today is because I think the Liberal Party needs to do better. We've got to get our message out. It's not just a message of the government's bad. It's a message of hope. It's a message that our party has been the party that has cleaned the mess up of this of the Labor Party in Victoria twice in the last 30 years, in 92 and again in 2010, and we'll do it again, because we govern for the state's interests, not for our own personal interests or our own uh, nepotism, the supporters' interests, as Labor does. We've picked up the pieces that Labor has left for our state twice in the last 30 years. It's not what we want to do, but we'll do it if we have to, for the sake of our children, all those kids homeschooling, for the sake of small business who are dying under this government, for the sake of Melbourne, the events capital of Australia that's been smashed, all our hospitality industries that have been smashed under this government, we will give them hope. It's our duty to do it. And I could not think of any other reason why I wouldn't do it, because it's our duty to. Can you turn the Liberal Party around? Can you get people to come with you? Can you get off the fence and tell people what you stand for, act with conviction? I mean, I think that's my biggest criticism having come back to Victoria after an absence of some time. I, I don't know what the Liberal Party sometimes in Victoria stands for. Are you going to fight? Are, you know, are, are you going to listen and, and give a voice for ordinary people? Uh, are you prepared to throw everything at this? A and would you give Michael O'Brien a job in your shadow cabinet? Yes, I'd be more than prepared to do that. Peter, let me tell you something. I stand for all those parents who have been homeschooling. I'm one of them. My wife is one of them. I stand with all those small businesses that have been forgotten by this government, with all the people who have been done over and whose jobs don't exist because of this government, all the people who've got mental health problems that this government's ignored, all the favourites they've played. More than anything in this state, with this government, it's about an attitude. The government of the day in Victoria is about dividing us. You're on a big unionised building site, you can go to work. Small business, you're closed. If you uh, agree to their political line, they'll promote you, they'll look after you. If you don't, they put a term on you, something-ism. You know, this government divides Victorians. I am about a Liberal Party that is for all of us, for all Victorians, about saying this state should be able to be prosperous for everyone who's in this state, not just those who are mates of the Premier. That is an attitude change of the government. That is something I'm very, very committed to. I'm a born and bred Melbourneian. I'm, this is where I, I live. I'm, I'm raising my boys here. Uh, my wife and I live here and we'll never move. But I can't stand to see Victoria being led by such a divisive person, a divisive government. And that is the attitude of the government that must change for our state to change. And I will be getting that message across. If you're elected, Matthew Guy, will you have a royal commission into this pandemic? There is no doubt that we need, at first instance, a Royal Commission into this pandemic. No doubt whatsoever. There was a Royal Commission into Black Saturday fires. Of course there was. 200 people died. There were Royal Commissions into Ash Wednesday back in the 80s. 800 people have died in Victoria, Peter. 80% of those who have passed away from COVID in this state. It is not good enough to have a child protection judge uh, front up an inquiry where the government says, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and that's just passed away. No, we need to have a proper royal commission. I commit to it, it's the right thing to do. I would have thought any Victorian would say, well, why wouldn't we want to get to the bottom of this? In case it happens again in our lifetime, in the next 10 years, in our children's lifetime, we've got to be ready. 
and we've got to know what the problems are in government delivery, service delivery, health delivery. That will only come from a royal commission, an upfront one. That's why I'll call one. All right, Matthew Guy, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. You've got a big job ahead of you. Good luck Thanks with again. it all. Thanks, Peter. Right. That's Victoria's new opposition leader there, Matthew Guy, in his first Sky News interview since the spill. Plenty more to unfold in the next few months. I'll watch it closely here on Credlin, as you know.